what I always think is incredible is how these trees have adapted and how many versions of this landscape at Kew these trees have witnessed and stood still. And I think it's something we all have to think about. The tree has to stay there, just watch it. God, these are really old. <laughs> so, so some of these, this is us when we had a country fair at college when I was training. There's my dad fell in a big beach, what we were working on. Right, this is like the year before I started at Kew. So this was a really large um, dead oak tree. But that's probably the nicest photo that I have with dad. And this is actually still up at mum and dad's. My name is Kevin Martin. I'm head of tree collections. I live in the gardens. I live there with my wife and my two boys. So for my two young lads, this is normal life. They've both born and raised in the gardens. I grew up with the trade. My dad was a tree surgeon and my granddad. And I really wanted to be a tree surgeon from about the age of five or six. That's all I wanted to do. With the banking crash in 2008, all the work dropped off and there wasn't a lot of work. And Laura was browsing on the internet and come across this job. I guess the rest is history and that's how I ended up that queue. One thing that's incredible about working at Kew is the history we have in looking after trees. For hundreds of years now, we've been at the forefront of looking and managing trees. And what's really exciting is how we have to keep progressing and how we have to change what we know and what we think about trees because of the climate change. So in 2022, we had a really severe drought. We had a big heat wave as well, and we had no rain for over six weeks, so we're losing a lot of trees. I think we ended up losing around 460 trees. So we really had to start to understand if this is going to become more normal, what is the consequence of that? I started thinking about how I could do research into that. The Landscape Succession Plan is really about how we're going to manage climate change with our living collection. It's really important that we do go to visit other colleagues that are doing the same studies. So with Henrik over in Sweden, he's been doing this now for over a decade, studying urban trees and urban tree selection and how we can look at different ecosystems and those species compositions. We really need to go and visit these sites to really understand how we can move things forward. Hey, 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 hey. How are you? Good to see you. Historical urban trees have been more towards an aesthetic and a structural element in urban environments in order to create identity but also scale to buildings and squares and also public parks and so on. So they have been very important for that perspective. But nowadays the urban trees have played or will play a much more important role by delivering all kinds of benefits and services. Because a lot of research has shown that the space between buildings, that's where we can make a difference. That's where we need to make a difference in order to cope with challenging climate, reducing flooding, increase the quality of air, also mitigate the heat. So today, urban trees have a much more multifunctional function. Here you go. Oh, amazing, thank you. Look at that. Oh. The scary thing is the, is the drought. We have had a really nice spring. If we look for the last seven or eight years, we've been having these really dry springs. Yeah. It's like, how do we manage that? You know, when yeah. we're managing tree collections. It's stressful. It is. Normally, when you talk about nature-based solutions or ecosystem services, you divide them into different categories. You have supporting ecosystem service, which is very much towards biodiversity how trees create habitats, but also environment for other plants and animals to live in, live on. And then you have the regulating ecosystem services, which is very much connected to urban environments, like flooding mitigation. They can uh, filter a lot of air. They can mitigate the temperatures. And then you have the cultural ecosystem services, which is very much too much us, the recreational uh, perspective, because a lot of evidence, a lot of research shows that we need greenery. So therefore, when we talk about the urban trees, 
is very much multifunctional type of perspective. The urban trees can create this resilience that will make urban environment livable. In the Arboretum here we have plants that are planted in the 70s, 80s, yeah. 90s from Pakistan, from Himalaya, stuff that just surviving. Yeah. But the last 10 years they start thriving yeah. because we have two weeks earlier spring yeah. and then we have two weeks later autumn. So suddenly we have like a month longer growing season. We can see in Arboretum like some species are declining because it's too, it's too stressful. stressful. Yeah. But then we have a lot of species that go up. So that, that's the interesting species because if we're going to work with urban trees, we can choose the one that are actually gaining a positive effect of a yeah. changing climate. We need to detect and identify which plants that are going to do the work for us in the future. Because as we have a different growing condition today already, and that will be even more extreme in the future climate. A lot of these trees that we have grown historically around the world, especially in the global north, is very much forest trees that dominate our cities today. There are maples, lime trees, and so on. So a lot of these trees are not possible to work with in the future. However, we can still work with the same species, but we have to upgrade the genetic materials. Instead of working with the UK type of lime or a maple, we maybe have to work with the Romanian, the Georgian, the Azerbaijan type, same species, but a different genetic materials that have through evolution been exposed to drier, hotter summer, still cold winters. At the same time, we also have to look at new species that can complement our native ones as well. One city, which I think is a world leading city in this perspective, is Malmö. Because Malmö had a reality check in the end of the 90s, in the beginning of this century. They have a long tradition of work with elms. And when the Dutch elm disease hit Malmö, they lost a lot of trees, like tens of thousands of trees. So they have learned a very bitter lesson of trying to work with a very limited source of trees. We worked with diversifying the, the tree population for quite some time now. We were hit really hard with the Dutch elm disease. That was approximately 35, 40 years ago. So we lost approximately 25% of all our street trees. And after that, we started to diversify. Here in Malmö, you've been Patrick in front of the curve by a long way. Mm. What we also do is always, always try to find the right tree for the right place. Before the Dutch elm disease, there was no thought about having a, a broad diversity of trees. Trees are one of the most important building blocks in building a more climate neutral city. We need them to be able to, to uh, climate compensate all the other materials that we they have in the city, but also to be able to mitigate future risks. I think that we are the best in, in well, Northern Europe in building with plants. And that is something that I think that many can learn from and many are as well. We're very fortunate to go to some areas that through my, the modelling work that I've done, it's allowed us to really specifically look at what's a suitable ecosystem for our future climate. So by using lots of statistics, looking at lots of global data, lots of climate data, we can match these environments. Now what's incredible for me is I've identified those environments and we've then been able to go and visit them and to see how closely matched they are to the growing conditions of Kew is incredible. And that's what Kew's future climate is predicted to be. So to go and see it is incredible, to go and see trees growing essentially on the edge of their range. So we are looking at trees in the hottest and driest of their observation. And they've adapted to grow there, which is quite incredible. This is taking species selection to the next level. We're now looking at where that seed source needs to come from. If we can get a better seed source available through the commercial trade, those trees are gonna have a lot more ability to adapt to our future growing conditions because they already have the memory to do with that because they are already growing in conditions that are gonna be very closely matched to our 2100 predicted climate. If we stand and think about the task that we have, it's actually really frightening. Climate is shifting so quick, it's so unpredictable, and it's quite alarming when you're dealing with living organisms that live for 100 years. But working with partners, we can start to build a picture and try to come up with some solutions. We've brought seed back 
so we've collected seed from those areas and now we've brought that seed back and it's growing here at Kew. Right. This is the Tilia Tolmentosa that yep. you collected from Romania. Yeah, it's great, isn't it, to see them now? Yeah. Like, this is the exciting yeah. part for us. In the nursery, we now have the next generation of plants, but we know that we've done our very best to select these plants so they have the best future available to them because they've already got these tools to adapt to our predicted future climate. It's so important we go to these wild areas and look at these ecosystems, especially in Romania, and go into that steppe environment, looking at those steppe forests and how these trees have adapted through evolution in order to survive. You know, we're looking at the the toughest trees that we can find. They're growing right on the edge of their limit, the driest and hottest environment. Going there and understanding that and seeing that is so important, especially for how we have to look at our future trees. very fortunate we've collected seed from those areas so we've got trees growing and that's what's really important that's what's exciting now and these new trees that we're trying to get here into the UK growing here in the Arboretum and hopefully eventually in the urban environment it's going to be critically important because if we don't get this green infrastructure in urban environments are going to be really really unpleasant place to live so hopefully if we can just get a couple of these tree species that we've identified into trade and see them planting regularly is an urban tree. What we're doing today, I won't ever see the benefit of in my lifetime. It's gonna be my children and maybe grandchildren that will see the benefits of this work. When you work with trees, you don't work in trees for yourself, you work for the next generation. You know, that's what we all do it for. Ha, 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 ha.